I want to talk about 1 Corinthians 8, 9, and 10, where Paul talks about eating food sacrificed to idols. This is a huge topic in the church today, although we don't really have the same cultural phenomenon that was going on here with the Corinthians. We don't really have people walking around the streets openly sacrificing to pagan gods. I say openly because I think there's a lot of covert things that the church doesn't even recognize. However, we don't really live in quite the same scenario. But the topic comes up quite a bit because it really strikes a chord with the whole controversial topic of law versus freedom. And I want to talk a little bit about that. I doubt this will be a comprehensive video. <laughs> I have a feeling we will do many of these in the future on this channel. But for now, I just want to talk about something I noticed in 1 Corinthians 8, 9, and 10. He actually starts talking about food sacrifice to idols. And then in chapter 9, he talks about the way that he works to earn a living. However, in chapter 10, Paul goes back to talking about sacrificing to idols. And as I was reading this morning, I, I realized something that I've actually never quite realized in this light, so I just wanted to share it. The context of who he's talking to is very important. Read your Bible in context because it's important. I never would have noticed what I'm about to share now if I hadn't done that. Every time I look down, by the way, it's because I'm looking at my Bible, so if it looks weird, I'm sorry. Okay, so first I just want to talk a little bit about the concept of law and freedom just briefly before I get into 1 Corinthians 8, 9, and 10 because I want to show a connection here. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says, Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth until heaven and earth disappear. Not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. A lot of people look at that and get very confused because Paul says something that sounds quite opposite in Galatians. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Listen, I, Paul, tell you this. If you're counting on circumcision to make you right with God, then Christ will be of no benefit to you. I'll say it again. If you're trying to find favor with God by being circumcised, you must obey every regulation in the whole law of Moses. For if you're trying to make yourselves right with God by keeping the law, you have been cut off from Christ. You have fallen away from God's grace. How can Paul say that and Jesus say what Jesus said? It sounds so opposite. But it's not opposite. It's because they were both saying the same point and we miss the point because we're so like tunnel visioned. Many of us trying to understand these topics and preach these topics don't even have the Holy Spirit in them. Read your Bible and see how many warnings there are about false teachers and false brothers and judge for yourself. Matthew 5 does not stand by itself. It's part of the Sermon on the Mount in which Jesus summarizes, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the Law and the Prophets. He says elsewhere that love sums up the Law and the Prophets. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor. My point is this. That conclusion summary statement that Jesus gave was in chapter 7. So if you read chapter 5 and you take that verse and you say, wow, we've got to obey the law because Jesus said he's not going to erase any of it, Okay, keep reading, because the point of the law is do to other people what you would want them to do to you. What is that? That's love. Josh did a really good video about this, which I'll put a link to somewhere <laughs> up here. But for now, I'm just going to briefly reiterate that the point of love is doing to others what you would have them do to you. It's looking out for the interests of others, okay? So when Jesus said he's not abolishing the law, he's not because love was always the point of the law. My point is this. The reason that Paul could say what he said and Jesus could say what he said is because they're saying the same thing. Take this as an example. The United States has a law that I can't murder. Okay, I can't murder my coworker. 
I'd go to prison. There is a law that stands and is immovable. I can't negotiate about it. I can't get off the hook for it if I do it. There's a law that says don't murder. Is that why you don't murder people? No. You don't murder people because you think it's wrong. You would never do that. It's wrong. You have a concept of morality and love enough to know that that is wrong. And so you don't want to do it. If the law were to suddenly go away and the government reversed it and said, never mind, we don't have a law anymore about murder, you can do whatever you want, what would you do? Would you do anything differently? No, you still wouldn't murder your neighbor. Why? Because it's love. So that's how it works with us. There is a law. There is a law. There are many, many laws in this book. But the Holy Spirit has written his law on our hearts when he lives in us. We want to do what is right. And that is why we don't murder. <laughs> so Paul says we're not under the law because we're not under the law. It's simple. It's exactly what he said. We're not under the law. But Jesus also said, yeah, if you hate your brother, you're committing murder. So I'm actually raising the standard. Why? Because hating is also not love, and love is the point of the law. <laughs> you see? It's not that complicated. It just takes a new mind and a new heart. It takes dying to Christ and rising as a new creation to be able to understand. But it's not complicated. That's kind of a long intro, but it's really tied into 1 Corinthians 8, 9, and 10, so I just wanted to talk about it briefly. 1 Corinthians 8 starts off like this. Now, regarding your question about food that has been offered to idols, yes, we know that we all have knowledge about this issue, but while knowledge makes us feel important, it is love that strengthens the church. So what do we see here? Number one, we see that Paul is clearly answering something that the Corinthians brought up. Because he says, regarding your question. So obviously there's a context there that we don't even know about because we have no record. However, that's important because he goes on and notice that he says, yeah, we have knowledge about the issue, but I want to get to the point. Love. So everything that follows in 1 Corinthians 8 is about love. So when we read 1 Corinthians 8 and we try to make it law, <laughs> can I eat food sacrificed to idols? Can I not? Can I watch this movie? Can I not? Can I do this? Can I not? Can I participate in this holiday? Can I not? Okay, guys, you're missing the point. The point is love. Now you need to ask, what would love do? And with that question, read 1 Corinthians 8, 9, and 10. Because Paul explains what love would do. That's the beauty of it all. Like, we read what Paul says and we're like, oh, there's so many laws from this guy who said we're not under the law. That doesn't even make sense. Okay. But Paul is explaining practically what love looks like. That's why the group of people that says, oh, freedom, 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 is also wrong. Because it's not just about freedom if freedom isn't love. And Paul explains that. I'll get to that in a minute. Why is it not just about freedom? Because love is about what is best for others. And the group of people that are like, we're free, we're free, we're free, usually are not thinking biblically about the interests of others. And I'll explain that in a little bit as well. Actually, again, Josh's video on love that we just put out recently goes into a lot more depth than I am going to get into in this video about it, the interests of others, so I encourage you to watch that. It's in our Dead Church playlist. But back to 1 Corinthians 8. So Paul explains, yes, you're technically free. He says that. You're technically free to do whatever. It doesn't matter. We can't win approval by what we eat. We can't win approval from God by what we eat. He says that clearly in verse 8. In verse 9, he gives a very important clarification, though. 
He says, but you must be careful so that your freedom does not cause others with a weaker conscience to stumble. But you also can't take verse 9 by itself. Because if you take verse 9 by itself, you might come away saying, oh, I'm just going to watch this movie because if I don't and I say something about that I think it's wrong, then that person's going to stumble and that wouldn't be love, so I'm just going to watch this movie. Basically, we take verse 9 and all of chapter 8, if you're in the side that says we're free, we're free, we're free, we take that chapter and that verse that I just read and we say that means it doesn't really matter what I do as long as that person's not offended. But that is also missing the point. I'm going to explain, but I want to just say first, it's missing the point because love is not a feeling. It's not about doing what that person will feel good about. No, it's about helping them see the truth because the truth is what's best for them. And that is truly what is in their best interests. Okay, and Paul explains that in chapter 10, but we separate all the chapters and all the verses and we just miss it. Okay, so let's get into chapter 9 really quick. Paul gets into a discussion about work, and this chapter has been taken as a way to support your position on whether or not somebody should be taking an offering or not taking an offering, working a secular job or not taking or not working a secular job. There's a lot of controversy about that, and maybe we'll do another video more on that topic at some point. But for now, I just want to point out, in verse 14, Paul says something that always caused me great confusion. <laughs> It says, the Lord ordered, in some translations it says commanded, that those who preach the good news should be supported by those who benefit from it. Yet I have never used any of these rights. I always used to read that and be like, how could God command that and Paul not do it? But I was missing the point. The point of the commands, every command that God ever gave is love. And that's why Paul is saying, he goes on to say, you can go read it for yourself in 1 Corinthians 9. He goes on to say, I don't do what I'm allowed to do because it's not in the best interests of those I'm preaching to. Whatever that meant for him. Maybe it was that he would have been a burden on them. Maybe they were poor. Maybe they would have looked down on him or not listened to him if they misunderstood that he was lazy for not working. Whatever the reasons were in Paul's situation, which there is a lot of debate about, and Paul does talk about it in a few other places. The point is, Paul clearly says that he doesn't use the right that he is allowed to use. Why? Because it's not love. Chapter 9 about secular work and all those things is actually Paul's supporting point for chapter 8. You have to notice that correlation. They don't stand alone. It's not, okay, we're going to think about food sacrifice to idols now. Okay, now we're going to think about secular work. No, no, no. Think about love. What is love according to the Bible? And what are the apostles and Jesus saying that that looks like? That is the question that we need to be asking if we want to learn to live like a disciple of Jesus. We can't read the Bible with a preconceived notion of what it means. Then later in chapter 9, he circles back to his original point. He says, I'm like a Jew with the Jews and like a Gentile with the Gentiles. And we see him doing that throughout his letters, throughout Acts. He conforms his actions to help the people who are around him. Not to not offend them. Be careful. That's not what he does. Actually, he offended a lot of people. To the point where they wanted to stone him, they wanted to kill him. I mean, Paul was a really offensive guy. Jesus was an offensive guy. If you go and read the Gospels for yourself without sermons in your head, and you just take a note to yourself of every time Jesus said something that you would never in a million years say, you'll see. Jesus was offensive. Paul was offensive. So get that out of your head that it's about how the audience you're talking to feels. That is not what Paul meant by love. That's not what Jesus meant by love. So what did they mean by love? That's what you need to be 
willing to tear down your foundations about and learn from the Bible itself. So Paul conformed to these people that he was with when it would help them hear the truth. That was his goal because that was what was in their best interest. And he says that in chapter 10 in 1 Corinthians. Okay, so again, summary. Chapter 8, he says, yeah, you're free about food sacrifice to idols, but do what's good for others. Chapter 9, he explains his own personal example of how he does that. He works because in his circumstance, that is what love would do to help the truth spread. And that's all Paul's concerned about is love. And in chapter 10, he says, look guys, Israel worshiped idols and God hated that. So let's learn from them. And then he says something very important in verse 19 and onward. What am I trying to say? Am I saying that food offered to idols has some significance or that idols are real gods? No, not at all. I'm saying that these sacrifices are offered to demons, not to God. And I don't want you to participate with demons. You cannot drink from the cup of the Lord and from the cup of demons too. You cannot eat at the Lord's table and at the table of demons too. What, do we dare to rouse the Lord's jealousy? Do you think we're stronger than he is? You say I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. You say I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. Don't be concerned for your own good, but for the good of others. And he goes on to explain in the next few verses that it's not actually about whether the food was sacrificed to an idol or not. It's about how it will affect the other person in regards to the truth. And he already explained in the last two chapters that it's about love. Love, truth. See, he is connecting these two, because look, eat whatever is offered to you without raising questions of conscience. But, okay, there's a but here. Suppose someone tells you this meat was offered to an idol. Don't eat it out of consideration for the conscience of the one who told you. And then in verse 33, he summarizes, I do what is best for others so that they may be saved. Okay, so that's the problem here with this whole controversy between law and freedom. You guys, both opinions miss the point if the point is not love for the sake of however someone else could be saved. Love and truth. You can't be saved without knowing the truth. Okay, so for you to say, oh, well, it's not loving for me to offend that person, not necessarily. Why? Because you shouldn't want to participate with demons. Paul's saying that. He's saying, oh, you're free to eat anything. He even says in one of the verses in chapter 10, he says, God made everything, basically. I'm summarizing. But he's saying, you shouldn't want to eat at the table of demons and the table of the Lord. He's not saying don't do it like a law like we think about it. Because we think about law as like an obligatory thing. Something we have to do because someone told us to, but usually we don't feel like it. That's why we are not under the law. It's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be you as a saved person filled with the Holy Spirit are disgusted by demons and want no part of them. If you still want to be a part of the demon's table, that is the problem that you need to address. Not whether or not you can eat from the table of demons. That's what we get hung up on. But why do you even want to? Why do you want to fill your mind with the garbage of Hollywood? Why do you want to fill your days with things and objects and hobbies and why is it a chore? to come to the table of the Lord. Do you see what I'm saying here? Do you see what Paul is saying here? Learn a lesson from Israel, guys. <laughs> That's what he's saying in chapter 10. Israel rejected God as king and he gave them what they wanted, which was Saul, and it was terrible for them. But it's what they wanted. That's why Paul's saying, sure, you're allowed, but it's not necessarily good for you. Saying the same thing. Yeah, you could have a king, 
But it's not good for you. <laughs> you shouldn't want the king. You should want the Lord to be your king. And that was the problem, was that they didn't even want God as their king. Until you understand that that was the problem, you won't understand what Paul's saying either. And you won't understand why we shouldn't eat food sacrificed to idols. It's not because of law. That's why if you eat a food sacrificed to an idol, Paul says, it's fine. If you don't know that it's sacrificed to an idol, you're not condemned. But if you're with somebody that tells you, oh yeah, this is demonic, or this is pagan, or this is evil, I'm putting it in today's terms. If they know that it's wrong, and you suddenly know that it's wrong too because they told you, don't do it. Don't do it because if you do it, you are telling that person what they think about you or how they feel is more important to you than the truth. And is that how people will be saved? No. They will only be saved if we have enough love to tell them the truth. And that's Paul's point in 1 Corinthians 8, 9, and 10. You're not under the law, but do what love would do. It's not about your own interests. It's about the interests of others. And what is the biggest interest of someone else? That they know the truth and that they be saved. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. That doesn't mean do whatever you want and say you give glory to God. That means you decide what you will and will not do based on God's glory first and foremost. And part of that is people knowing the truth about him. So stop asking, can I do this? Can I do that? And stop saying, oh, I'm allowed to do anything. Both of you, <laughs> whatever side you're on, stop saying those. You're missing the point. What is love? What is in people's best interest? What will help them know the truth? And in what ways do you still want to participate with demons in a way you don't even understand? Because you've just been cultured to think that everything's okay as long as we call it love. Whether you call it love or not has nothing to do with whether it's love. So go read and see what Paul said love is from his examples and judge your life based on that. If you become aware that there is something in your life that is associated somehow with evil, do whatever it takes to disassociate yourself from that because that is the only way that people will see that there's something different about you. Israel was set apart by God because the nations were supposed to see that they were different. And that, it, that is how it is today for us who say we believe in Jesus. We are supposed to be that set apart as well. It's not about law. It's about love. But it's about love like God defines love.